We have to wait till Monday for Brazil against Mexico. The bookies have got Brazil at big favourites, 9-2 to two on. Mexico, meanwhile, at 3-1. to one. For more, looking ahead to this game, let's go over to Sebi and Herc. Greetings from Moscow, where Mexico trained this morning. Before the practice session, Herc, we had a chance to listen in to a couple players speaking in press conference. Alfredo Talavera, the backup goalkeeper, and Andres Guardado, the captain. One of the topics that came up, and it's where I want to go first, is kind of a 30,000-foot theme. This could be, in many ways, an all-or-nothing match for Mexico's golden generation. They're effectively aging out. Any round of 16 game for Mexico is the biggest game in Mexican soccer history. But I might suggest that this truly, really is the biggest game the Mexican national team, given all the weight put on this generation, has ever played. This is the golden generation, the Guardados, the Chicharitos, uh, the, all these players. Gio, Vela, everybody. Gio Vela, all these players that have played abroad, that have had somewhat sterling careers. It's all on this game because this is a do-or-die game. It's a must-win game. This is basically the last World Cup they're going to have in their prime. Chicharito's 30 years old. These players aren't going to be around performing at this level come 2022. So this is it, and it's this Brazil. It's the same squad, same generation that they beat in the U-17 World Cup final, same generation that they beat in the 2012 Olympic gold medal game. It's all lining up, and it very much is the most important games of their Mex Mexican national team career. One player that we haven't seen much of, but who before the World Cup you said was a tournament player is Giovanni Dos Santos. Mm. I wonder if you agree with me on this. This seems like the perfect game for Gio. One, because Brazil will probably let him have the type of space, and also because of the motivation that he would carry his father being Brazilian born. You're completely right. You have that motivation of being a dual national with Brazil, that motivation of you know what it's like to play versus Brazil. Brazil will let you have the ball. Don't know if he'll start. There will be a lot of bodies that last game uh, start, suffered cramps, suffered a, uh, injury that may not be around this game. I think he's best suited off the bench when the spaces are open and those dying 20 25 minutes, I think we're going to see Giovanni. And Giovanni always tends to surprise in the biggest moments. We saw it last World Cup versus Holland. This is that type of player. In these press conferences, there's not really all that much that comes out that's usually very interesting. I will say this. Andres Guardado's comments concerning Neymar, the simulation. Uh, you know, he said he likes to dive around a lot. He exaggerates fouls. To me, that's... Uh, in some way, bulletin board material for Brazil potentially, but also a very clear message to FIFA, to the guys running the VAR, and to Monday's referee. Well, he mentioned VAR, which is in a sense ridiculous because VAR can't check if you're mm -hmm. diving. They won't, they're not going to call something back for diving. But what he does by this is he's conditioning the referee in the next, in the next game. Hey, watch out for this guy. He likes to roll around. All of a sudden, if that's in the referee's back of his head, uh, it could play into the favor uh, of the Mexican players. They could maybe be a little bit more physical with them. We know that if you're physical with Neymar, you can tune him out of a match, especially in this World Cup. We've seen it. Uh, Costa Rica did it for a while. Switzerland has also done it. I think the Mexican national team, they know that he's a big part of Brazil. He's one of the best players in the world. If you can isolate him and take him out of the game, your chances of winning this game are better. Speaking of interesting comments, Juan Carlos Osorio's comments after the Sweden match, one of the things that jumped out to me from his press conference was the fact that he said, look, I hold my hand up, I got this wrong, and I learned some lessons. So what were the lessons then that he learned against Sweden, and how do those apply, if at all, to Brazil? 51 games, and in game number 51, he decides to finally repeat a lineup. And he also decides not to play to the opponents. He played into their hands. I think now with Juan Carlos Osorio, he understands that you have to play to Brazil. You have to, in some way, try to neutralize their best player in Neymar, neutralize Coutinho, neutralize that offensive transition they, game they have where they're very direct at times with Paulinho. He understands this. We're going to see a much more organized Mexican national team, a team that's going to be much more prepared because they have to be. What they showed versus Sweden was not really characteristic of what we've seen under Juan Carlos Osorio. This is the biggest game in Juan Carlos Osorio's tenure. Every do or die moment he's had, whether it's Chile, the 7-0, the 4-1 versus Germany, the 2-1 versus uh, uh, Jamaica, this is it now. He can reverse all that and make it to that final quinto partido, that coveted quinto partido, with a good game. Mexico versus Brazil draws closer and closer Monday in Samara. For Hercules Gomez, I'm Sebastian Salazar. We send it back to you. Thank you very much. For more from the boys, be sure to download their daily podcast at 2 on 3.